Thanks for changing gears there. That was uh, fantastic. Okay, now, this is a very important one. When you write about action in a sentence and when you're telling a story and pretty much you know anything that you write about even if it's academically we're not writing fiction okay we're writing about research and results and so on there's going to be action um, in your sentences and action can be expressed as either a verb or as a noun now now that might not be intuitive but what happens is we nominalize verbs, right? So let's look again at these two sentences here. In the first sentence, it says that Locke frequently repeated himself because he did not trust the power of words to name things accurately. Okay. Now, repeated is obviously the past tense of the verb repeat. It's an action. Uh, so is trust and name. But if you look in the second sentence, those verbs have been nominalized. They've been expressed not as verbs, but as nouns. So repetition is the noun form of the verb repeat. Naming is the noun form of name. Okay? And this creeps in naturally to our writing. Um, you know, if I write about, if I'm in the legal fraternity, for example, and I write about the, you know, the decision of the high court to overturn this, the judgment, for example. Now, you know, I, I've converted the verb decide um, into decision. And what happens is, again, when you do that, like in the previous example, when we make subjects obscure and abstract, we add words into the sentence. So um, this is, uh, 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 thanks, Cindy. I'm glad that was helpful. This is another way in which inadvertently and unintentionally we, we add extra words into our sentences. We clutter sentences um, unnecessarily with words when we either make our subjects obscure and abstract or when we nominalize verbs as, as it's been done there um, into the noun form of that action or that, um, that specific activity. Okay, um, right. Um, thank you for that feedback there, Cindy. If 